Get ready to be mesmerized. Get ready to be entertained. Get ready to be informed. And most of all, get ready to listen. The latest sports news, great interviews, and the best coverage from around the nation's capital. It's Listen In with KNN, the sports sound of the district, right now on AM 1340 and 96.9 FM, Fox Sports Radio. Here's your host, Kelsey Nicole Nelson. This show is brought to you by Doc Sports Services. Listen in with KNN, presented by Fox Sports Radio, 96.9 FM and 1340 AM. We'll be diving into the wrestling and reality TV world with today's special guest, who is none other than the beautiful and wonderfully talented Mrs. Brandy Rhodes. And with that, it means it's time to sit back, relax, and get ready to listen in and follow along with the conversation using hashtag listen in with KNN. Now, I know you guys are used to my Do Good Award right here at this part of the show, but because we have a big special guest today, we will actually be saving that for next show. So it's now time for a quick commercial break, and we will be right back. With you. This show is brought to you by Doc Sports Services. Listen in with KNN, presented by Fox Sports Radio, 96.9 FM and 1340 AM. We'll be diving into the wrestling and reality TV world with today's special guest, who is none other than the beautiful and wonderfully talented Mrs. Brandy Rhodes. And with that, it means it's time to sit back, relax, and get ready to listen in and follow along with the conversation using hashtag listen in with KNN. Now, I know you guys are used to my Do Good Award right here at this part of the show, but because we have a big special guest today, we will actually be saving that for next show. So it's now time for a quick commercial break, and we will be right back with today's special guest. Looking for winning sports picks and predictions? Since 1971, Dot Sports has been recognized as one of the most trusted names in the sports handicapping industry. For the listeners of this very show, Doc Sports is giving out $60 worth of their premium member picks for free. These are the exact same premium member picks that 1,000 of their current members pay for. And guess what? You get them for free. Just text the word radio to the number 29022. Text radio to the number 29022 for instant access. Doc Sports also provides free picks on every single game. You want NBA picks? Simply Google search Docs NBA Picks, NHL Picks. Google search Docs NHL Picks. Need MLB Picks? Google search Docs MLB Picks. Remember to text the word radio to the number 29022 and start winning today with Doc Sports Service. Welcome back to Listen In with KNN, the sports sound of the district and beyond. It's now the time to get into the show and welcome in our special guest, Mrs. Brandy Rhodes. Brandy, how are you today? Hey, Kelsey, how you doing? I'm wonderful. Anytime I have a special guest like you, um, it's always a joy and pleasure to have you on. And I was just speaking to you because, I mean, Brandy, you have so many fans. When I announced that you were coming on, everyone went crazy. <laughs> oh, did they? Well, that's good. Yeah, that's good. Did they go crazy in a good loyal. way or, or, a, yes. or a crazy way? <laughs> Okay. Crazy in a positive sometimes, way. Your fan base is very oh good. strong. Sometimes you never know. You know, my fans are very opinionated and they have a lot to say. Sometimes it's a, it's a lot to handle. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a positive way. We were very excited. And, Brandy, if you don't mind, I'd like to run through your bio just for people that might not know you as well. To know, let them know all the cool and great things that you're doing. Okay, cool. Sounds good. All right, wonderful. So Miss Brandy Rhodes is 34, and she was born in Michigan. Shout out to all of our Michigan natives. She was an accomplished <laughs> figure skater and also academically. She attended the University of Mar- Michigan. I almost said Maryland because I'm thinking of myself because you guys are now oh. one of our rivals in the Big Ten, but University of Mich- Michigan for undergrad. Post-graduation, Brandy worked for a local TV news affiliate as a reporter and an anchor. After gaining some experience, Brandy decided she wanted more in a larger city, so she moved to Miami, Florida, which who doesn't want to move to Miami, Florida, on a whim to work on her TV and acting career. While in Miami, she attended the University of Miami and their highly sought-after broadcast journalism master's program. Shout out to us who have our master's. Love that you work towards that, Brandy. And while there, she also <laughs> worked in the modeling world, doing print and commercials for clients such as Maxim Magazine, KFC, Zumba, and Budweiser. During her time in Miami, Brandy was contracted by the WWE, where she would go on to become one of the WWE's universe's favorite divas and work for the company for four years as the ring announcer for SmackDown Live, backstage host, 
and interviewer for WWE's most premier programming on networks like USA, Sci-Fi, ION, and the WWE Network. Brandy wanted to drop the mic and step into the ring to compete, at which point she left WWE behind and wrestled on TNA Impact Wrestling in their TNA Knockout Division and can now be seen body slamming opponents in the Ring of Honor, which who we all love, with the Women of Honor Division. Brandy also enjoys cooking in her spare time. She takes she loves taking classes to enhance her skills in the kitchen, which I'm sure Cody is lovely and happy about, <laughs> as well as putting a fitness-friendly spin on many of her favorite meals. Brandy also enjoys writing about and consuming all things related to the horror genre. As an avid theme park goer, Brandy is always wanting to try the latest and greatest thrill rides and attractions. She is a huge fan of the Wizarding World of Harry Potter World at Universal Studios, as well as Halloween Horror Nights which she attends multiple times each year. The stunning, smart, and stylish Brandy also runs her own popular style and travel blog, which you guys should all check out, notanotherbasicb.com. She's also, of course, married to WWE superstar, former WWE superstar and actor, and current Ring of Honor world champion Cody Rhodes. She is also the daughter-in-law of late wrestling legend Dusty Rhodes. And also, of course, you guys probably see her now on WAG. So, Brandy, you are so busy, and truly you are the meaning of an entrepreneur Entrepreneur, but actually, I did not know about your love for theme parks. I'm actually scared of roller coasters and heights, so you were kind of oh, like no. my alter ego. <laughs> oh no! Okay, so yeah, interestingly enough, um, you know, later in life, a lot of things that scare us early in life, we turn. Mm -hmm. Well, it goes both ways. It'll it'll go like if you're not fearless early in life, you become scared later in life, right. and then if you're fearful early in life, you become a psychopath later in life. So I, I'm the, that one. Um, I was afraid. Uh -huh. I was terrified of roller coasters oh when I was a kid. <laughs> and um, I was always a tall kid, so I could mm -hmm. make the height requirement for everything. Right. And I would always pray, oh, I, I hope I don't make it so that I don't oh have gosh. to get on this ride. Yeah, right. and, and every time I would make it and my parents would make me go and something would always happen and I would cry or you know, something ridiculous. Yeah. And I don't, I, I really don't know when I finally just stopped um, mm -hmm. being so afraid of them and, and started to kind of crave them. I think one thing I did was stop fighting that feeling in the pit of your stomach when you drop. Ah, that is, dude, that's what that scares me when my key. stomach drops. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But if you if you don't fight it, it feels good. If you fight right. it, it feels like it's going to be worse than it actually is. So mm. that that's also another key. I used to be terrified of flying too, and the same thing with that. Don't fight yep. every time. <laughs> every time the plane, oh my gosh, you can't counteract it, you know. So that's just right. a stressful flight. So yeah, that that is one of the crazy things that I have turned my <laughs> life around to to fall in no. love with. I'm yeah, and also and, notes on this, Brandy, because I'm still scared to fly as well. So I try to take the train oh, whenever okay. I can. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I used to be terrified. But, you know, once you start working in the wrestling business, that's the end of that because that's how you, right. that's how you work. You never work it's your in the same city. Yeah, yeah. Right. So you kind of have to get over that pretty quickly. Um, but an, another thing that a lot of people I don't think know about me is that, um, you know, I'm kind of very well known for being a public speaker. And mm -hmm. I was terrified of public speaking until – the oh, wow. 10th grade, I want to say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I took a, a public speaking class in 10th grade and just forced myself to get over it. I just, I would cry. <laughs> like when there would be speeches and things, I would wow. always cry because my hands would shake and I'd be like, everybody mm -hmm. knows I'm scared because I'm shaking and my voice would right. shake. And um, I then cut to years later announcing in front of a hundred thousand people live right. at WrestleMania. Nope, no problem. Wow. wow. <laughs> so so yeah, the opposite, on, right? Of the younger big on you. conquering your fears. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Um wow. and with that, it's funny, I, I love I love to, you know, whenever I get to work one on one with like new trainees or people who are coming up in, in the business, in any aspect of the business, and they'll say stuff like, you know, what, how are you not, how do you not be scared? Um, like talking, how do you not? And I'm like, well, I'm talking right now and I'm scared right now. You just don't mm -hmm. know it. Um, cause I'm right. trained, <laughs> you know? Right. And exactly. Like, well, right. Yeah. Just to breathe. Like breathing is, is so essential to the noise coming out of your body. If you're not breathing, that's when you get that shaky voice thing going on. And I still get right. that sometimes. And as soon as I notice it, I go, oh, I'm not breathing. I got to take a deep breath. Mm -hmm. Um, so right. <laughs> yeah. 
So they're yeah, giving away all these good tricks. tips for free, Brandy, all which is great. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I know some people charge for this type of advice, but it's so true. I mean, I'm the same way. Yes, I'm in broadcasting, but I still do get nervous sometimes when I'm doing public speaking. And like you said, you just have to relax, loose breathe, and know it's going to be okay. Because for the most part, when people want to hear you speak. They want you to do well. Um, and, you know, obviously you're up there for a reason. So that's so true. And just like you, I mean, I had my own experience. I used to be afraid of public speaking. And, of course, now people probably wouldn't know that. But while I was in school, I just had a life-changing experience. And then now I know it's going to be okay and I can get through it. Um, and something else we have in common, Brandy, is that you got your master's in journalism. So tell me, I mean, how did you kind of go from the journalism world to where you are now? And, I mean, did you ever see that coming to fruition? Um, definitely never saw myself being in the wrestling business at all. Um, that mm-hmm. was not a goal of mine or some secret, you know, <laughs> endeavor that I wanted right. to, to, you know, embark upon. It just uh-huh. happened. Um, like you said, I was at University of Miami and kudos to them on their broadcast journalism program because it's yes. excellent. Anybody who has yes. any, any type of want to do it, uh, if they could, you know, consider that as an option definitely University of Miami, but, um, and, uh, you know, I, I kind of was doing that because I had lost my love for TV news kind of through a bad experience, but I didn't want to fully mm-hmm. lose that storytelling ability that I had. I, that's, that's what I always loved about yeah. news. I love telling stories. So, um, while I was doing that, I was just modeling kind of on the side or, or mm-hmm. I guess full time because that was how I was paying my bills. So, <laughs> right. So, um, and have to yeah, pay your bills. <laughs> I, I was, yeah. Yeah. And uh, my agent just called one day and she said, you know, don't say no until I right. say the whole thing. So that already is a bad way to start. <laughs> so mm-hmm. I was like, okay, I'm getting ready to say no. Yeah. Um, but she was like, what, what are your thoughts about, you know, WWE wrestling? Mm. And I said, well, I don't know much about WWE. I know a lot about WWF because that was back when I was a kid and, you know, Andre right. Giant and Hulk Hogan and yes. Macho yes. and all those people. That all was great. my, yeah, that was my only experience with it. And then I said, now, only thing I know about WWE is from a recent women's studies class I took at Michigan. Mm-hmm. A lot of women don't like it because they have women do these things that are considered today degrading. So right. <laughs> like bra mm-hmm. panty matches and, you know, right. barking like a dog in the ring mm-hmm. and, then, you know, stuff like that. So I said, you know, that stuff I will never do. And she right. said, well, the good news is, is it's all different than that. It's PG now, the, you know, they're on USA network and it's all about equality and all of this good stuff. So I said, okay, well, right. I'm, I'm an open-minded person. So everything mm-hmm. that comes my way, I look at, um, from as much of an open-minded perspective as possible. And some things are a fit and some things aren't. Um, and right. I started watching WWE. I think I went home and watched SmackDown that day. And I was mm-hmm. really intrigued, really into it. The characters were cool. There were no traces of this attitude era <laughs> behavior, which is so funny because people love the attitude era and they think so fondly of it um, because so many great characters and great wrestlers came from that era. But, you know, when right. you're a, a, a early or I guess a late teen and you're being yelled at by professors about how degrading this is, you, you kind of take a different mm-hmm. outlook. <laughs> on right. It. I'm so, sure. Um, so, yeah. So uh, I was very pleased with what I saw. So I told her, yes, mm-hmm. I'd be interested. And then I was invited to come attend Survivor Series at American Airlines Arena. That was my first mm-hmm. ever live wrestling event that I ever went to. Cause as a kid, my, my parents, they would order the pay-per-views, but we never went to them. So um, right. that was my first time being in, in a live crowd and seeing um, pyro fireworks coming up from the stage. And the first wrestler that I saw when I got there perform was Rey Mysterio. And mm. it just captured my heart because he's amazing. And he's so, he's a character. He's larger than life, but he's not that big of a guy. He's, <laughs> but right. he's, he's amazing. Um, his costuming is incredible and, you know, the crowd just loved him. So at that moment I was sold and I was like, okay, when do I start? When, when do we, <laughs> when do we get to work here? Uh, and soon after Great. that, yeah, I was sent on my way and there I went to train. Yeah. The rest is history. It sounds like, and I mean, I hear you telling the story and I don't know, are you a big fan Brandy of the bachelor? Um, so there was a long period of time, probably throughout a lot of college, that I was very mm-hmm. into The Bachelor. Very into Okay. It. Not, <laughs> haven't seen it in a while. 
but yeah. Okay. <laughs> so I bring that up because like on one of the last seasons, they actually had the girls um, get trained actually by professional wrestlers, and it was so funny to watch. And I say that to say I don't think a lot of people knows what goes into getting your body prepared mentally. I mean, and also mentally, but physically as well. And it was, I mean, the, they saw how tough it was, right? Because you are telling a story when you wrestle, and then you have to be in this character mode. So I say that to say, I mean, how did you prepare yourself for your wrestling career when you first, you know, started out? I mean, how were you able to be so powerful and then become such a big star, you know, in the sport? Uh, well, you know, my path was a lot different than most people's. Um, mm-hmm. Having that announcing and, you know, broadcasting background, got me to travel up to the road is what they call it when you're on the TV shows and traveling. Right. Um, that got me pushed up there very quickly. I I might be the quickest person ever to go from <laughs> the training center to the road, which is really cool. Yeah. But at the mm-hmm. same time, you don't get much training. So a lot of it is on the fly. Uh, right. A lot of the, you know, I learned as I went as an announcer, And then, you know, for a while I was able to do that and then still try to train to wrestle, but I wasn't retaining anything because so much was being thrown at me. So, you know, I'd be on the road for five days, ring announcing, come home, get in the ring, and then I forgot what I learned two weeks ago because it just Mm -hmm. wasn't sticking, you know. And so um, that's why I, I, you know, I just ended up on the announcing course for so long and not wrestling in ring. Um, but what was great about mm-hmm. that was when you're announcing, you are in the best seat in the house. So right. I sit literally the closest to the ring and watch every single match from start to finish because I've got to announce everything. So I've got to see who's going to win and how how they're going to win and, you know, basically right. the eyes and ears of everybody else there. So mm-hmm. um, I learned a lot just watching um, okay. and, and learned kind of a lot of reactions from the crowd um, I could right. tell when, when they could tell something wasn't right or I could tell when they were super excited about something. So, um, yeah, a lot of that was just really invaluable experience that I'm lucky to have. Uh, a lot of people don't mm-hmm. get that. A lot of people, they say in the wrestling business, a thing about, you know, a light bulb going off. And for many people, it takes years and years and years before the light bulb finally goes off. I feel like right. I sat at ringside and the light bulb was going off. So my brain... Mm-hmm has been very much ahead of my body <laughs> as far right. as, uh, you know, wrestling actually goes. But the catch-up has has been good. But I think I, I prefer it the way that I did it because um, I'm an intellectual. So I like right. to understand everything and know it. I like, I'd rather that than just do it. Um, but mm-hmm. a lot of people, when it comes to wrestling, they just have to do it. And then hopefully right. they figure it out later why they did it or why it made sense or <laughs> whatever right. it may be. right. And then, Brandy, I mean, staying on wrestling, right? I mean, the Ring of Honor, that has been, I feel like, just so huge and just seeing all your success there. And we actually have a question um, from our friend over at the Wrestling Realm, Mr. Brian H. Waters, who is a host of that podcast. And he actually wanted to ask you, who has been your toughest opponent thus far in the Ring of Honor? Oh, wow. (laughs) That's tough. (laughs) Action tag. Um, (laughs) Yeah, that's tough because everybody – Everybody there is so, so good, um, so skilled, and the style of wrestling at Women of Honor is is very different than um, Mm -hmm. a lot of what you see in WWE or Impact or other genres, mainly because of that close-knit tie between um, stardom, which is Japanese wrestling, um, right. and, uh, you know, Japanese style wrestling is so different from American style wrestling. So a lot of these girls have trained in Japan, and um, they have a, a strong Japanese wrestling background. So it is a lot to learn <laughs> and a lot to mm-hmm. take on. Um, but if I had to pick one person and say, who's been the toughest? Oh man, I guess I, I guess I would probably have to go with Kelly Klein, and I hate okay. Kelly Klein. I absolutely can't stand her. I don't even want to give her that, but I, but I, I guess I can't, uh, I can't say mm-hmm. anything that's not true. But yeah, she's right, a very strong not. competitor. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, she, she's until recently was undefeated and um, mm-hmm. was defeated in the Women of Honor Championship tournament by Sumi Sakai. Mm-hmm. So that was a victory for us all because I right? don't I'm sure. like Kelly at all. None of us. <laughs> like if, if Kelly, you know, 
I don't know. I don't know if, if Kelly walked off a cliff, what, what would happen? I, I, <laughs> I hate to see, say that some people might celebrate. That'd be terrible, right? But I think some right. of those girls actually hate her that much. So <laughs> Right. It's, the hate is real. <laughs> the hate is extreme. It's extreme. It's that type that you mm-hmm. have to think about it and say, like, is this really worth it? <laughs> right. But no, right. Kelly, Kelly's a very, very strong competitor for sure. Yeah. And then tell me so far, what has been your favorite moment being a part of the Ring of Honor? Um, you know, the Women of Honor Championship was has been great to be a part of, um, mm-hmm. simply because it was something that the the girls, the women's division, tried to contour for years. Um, and then when it finally did come to fruition, everybody put their best face forward for that competition. So there was nothing easy about that. Um, I was fortunate to make it as far as I did in the tournament. And, um, right. of course, you know, I ended up facing Tennille Dashwood, who a lot of people know better as Emma um, for mm-hmm. her time in WWE. But uh, she she's an extremely talented wrestler. So if I had to get taken out by someone, I guess, she she was a good one for it to be, but um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but yeah, um, definitely being a part of that tournament has meant the world to me, and it's been a, in a great moment for me to kind of shine and showcase what I can actually do. Right, right, and it's been so much fun to watch. Like I said, I mean, it's a true joy, and your fans truly there and watching, you know, every moment of your Ring of Honor. And just staying with wrestling, Brandy, I have to ask you, we have to talk about Cody, right? We can't continue on with the show without talking about your husband. So how is it, I mean, how is it being, not only are you a wrestler, but how is it being married to a professional wrestler who also, of course, has the legacy, you know, of his late father? I mean, how has that whole experience been for you? Oh, my goodness. It's been uh, definitely, you know, you never know what your life is going to look like when you're a kid you uh, you never say mm-hmm. you know well i guess some kids that watch wrestling maybe say <laughs> right hey, they I'm might think about marry it a wrestler um mm-hmm. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> that definitely wasn't wasn't on my agenda i don't think anything right. was i was always just a was going to be you know queen of the united states by myself and you know also a, a yeah. doctor and a surgeon and, and a tv news mm-hmm. anchor and a professional right. figure skater. there was never <laughs> going to be any room to be at all men. Right. right, there's never going to be room for men. So, <laughs> but you know, I'm, I'm very lucky to ha- to have Cody, who's uh, an exceptional partner in all of this. Um, it, it's very nice to have someone who's been through so much that can understand right. some of the things that I go through now, some of my growing pains. Um, a lot of time I spend in intense pain these days, and he understands yeah. uh, on levels right. that other people don't. Like when I say, like, mm-hmm. man, this pain just really shoots from here to here, and he's like, oh, yeah, I know exactly what that is. And I'm like, thank goodness, because no one else does. <laughs> um, so, yeah, yeah it, it's really great to kind of, you know, share in all of our experiences, good and bad, and it's wonderful to have somebody that you can bounce ideas off of. I mean, right. we, we watch a lot of wrestling in this house, so – um, we'll watch something and then I'll go, Oh wait, okay, pause it. Okay, hold on, lay down. Yeah. All right, let me <laughs> let me do this. Let me see if I can do this. Oh yeah, yeah, okay, cool. Oh wow. Um I don't know that a, a traditional husband would be so into that, but <laughs> yeah, I don't know. They might think but, you might hurt them, right? <laughs> right, right, right. So, you know, I I'm lucky to have somebody who's so passionate about this sport and just most people if you ask them, all of his friends and colleagues, no one loves wrestling more than Cody Rhodes. So yeah, um, I'm definitely lucky to have him on this journey with me. Uh, so well said. I know if he hears this, you're just going to make his make his heart melt <laughs> from your kind words about your husband. <laughs> and me, staying on wrestling, I'm just curious to know, I mean, did his, you're the daughter-in-law, of course, of the late legend, Dusty Rhodes. Did, did Cody or Dusty pass any, you know, tips or advice to you on in the wrestling world or, you know, just in the wrestling realm of how to be successful in this industry? You know, one of the, I guess, everybody has advice. Everybody has, you know, things that they say that someone once said to them and resonated with Mm -hmm. them, but it doesn't necessarily resonate with anyone else. Um, Right. (laughs) But what I gain the most from them is just watching them and and Mm -hmm. kind of observing their careers and even Dusty when he was um at the performance center he was so beloved for how he helped everyone so much and was just so 
available to everyone to work with everyone right. to give people their time of day and um that that is one thing that I try to take with me from them is that you should never be so selfish in this industry that you can't help other people um mm -hmm. and I watch Cody these days he's so creative and one of the most helpful people when someone comes to him with an idea he fully hears it even if it's something that he maybe doesn't agree with but he'll fully hear right. it and um Dusty was so much that way with students. Um, he really wanted to help everyone. He really wanted everyone to succeed um, because that's what's good for the business. It's uh, a lot of people I feel like look at it like it's all about me. I have to be the one. But if you're the only one, we're not going to mm -hmm. be able to do this for very long. So right, you can't <laughs> grow. Right, a lot you can't of people. Grow it. Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. So I think um, that's been one of the most valuable things I've learned from them. Right, right, and just taking that. And then now, Cody is with you on WAGS, which, of course, is a huge reality show. I probably feel like every other person in this country probably watches it, but I know that's probably been a transition, not just for you, but for him as well. So, I mean, how have you guys been able to maintain such a strong relationship while also being on reality uh, TV? And I ask that, Brandy, because sometimes we see in the news that reality TV can also sometimes hurt couples. I mean, what has been your guys' success to, you know, lasting the whole WAGS reality show, but also, you know, keeping it nice and fun and loving in your household? Honestly, uh, for me, it was always a matter of just being true to who you are and what you are. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I, I I saw and I've seen with other shows that I wasn't a part of, but observed um, some of the cast and, I've seen people put on so much for for reality shows because they think this is what someone wants or they think this is what's going to get them extra mm -hmm. airtime. And at the end of the day, that is how you, you hurt yourself. Um, you can't maintain being a false image of yourself for very long. So right. your best bet is to just be who you are. Um, and right. we, we were just that, you know, we were here, there and everywhere with wrestling shows and, you know, we were, uh, in, in the middle of trying to sell our home and we were, you know, mm -hmm. just, just doing what, what we normally had to do and not, uh, right. not really putting on any kind of way. Everything was as is for normal life for us. And, um, right. you know, I, I, I saw a lot of people, uh, I think, you know, someone told me and I won't, I won't out anyone who's, <laughs> who's telling mm -hmm. me of things, course. but someone told me that a, a couple rented a home that was like, ten thousand dollars a month for the show wow. and i was like wow. why why <laughs> why right why right why not just living the space you actually want to live in you know for the show right. that that's just just kind of crazy um but mm -hmm. that apparently that's some things that people do and they you know get brand new cars and all these right. things and hey we, we we like our two cars we're good. We, right. we don't have a huge collection right now, and I don't mm -hmm. think I'm really a car person. I don't think I would <laughs> if I had more time. Right. I don't think I would have a bigger <laughs> big car collection <laughs> or too big of a house because I don't like to clean. And to uh, pay somebody yeah. to clean much more square footage than I have currently would probably be right. ridiculous. You can't even think so. about it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Wow. And I mean, just staying, though, with, with WAGs, I mean, so we see these reality stars, and especially I think with women, they're viewed differently, and especially since you're a minority woman um, on a reality show. So I'm just curious to hear from you. I mean, what do you hope people take about you when they watch you on WAGS? I mean, what do you hope they realize about you that you think maybe they haven't seen from your other previous careers? Um, I think with uh, with me and WAGS, it was timed pretty well because people were just getting used to the idea of me not being mm -hmm. just a talking head. Um, I right. think a lot of times in an announcing and broadcasting position, people find you so rigid and so um, unrelatable that it's kind of hard to be a fan of someone like that. So I think that that was mm -hmm. timed very well to kind of show a little bit of personality and also to show, you know, the serious side of how seriously I take wrestling in my life it's it's my main career I don't think a lot of people right. understood that or really knew that um, I think right. a lot of times they think of Cody and they think of I don't know what they think I'm doing but <laughs> mm -hmm. I think that they don't think yeah. that I'm wrestling all the time so um, it was good I think for people to see that that is actually 
the life right now. I am wrestling full time. Nice. Um, I do have other projects that are going on here and there, but they're kind of centered around wrestling, as was WAGS. Um, you know, when they came to me for the show, I had to explain to them, well, here's the deal. I'm on this contract. I have all these dates that I'm committed to. So all the filming has got to go around this, which all was right. tough right. for them. But, you know, that, that's who I am. I don't break what I'm, what I'm already doing, what makes me happy to try mm-hmm. something else. We can do those right. things simultaneously or not at all. So <laughs> Right, right. Hey, I mean, you're keeping it real with them, and obviously they wanted it, and that's why you were on there. And, I mean, you can just see the realness, you know, from your appearance. And, I mean, staying with WAGS, Brandy, how was – I know everybody wants to know this question, but overall, I mean, what was the real experience like with the other ladies on the show? I mean, is it as drama-filled as most people think reality shows are? I mean, or did you guys all genuinely just, you know, kind of really get along? And are these people, you know, you can really see yourself being around for years to come? So uh, there was plenty of drama. The The thing that right. I found strange was the mm-hmm. – with the editing and the producers, the way that they put things together, they omitted the best drama, <laughs> I thought. Mm, I interesting. Thought on, on drama that wasn't that compelling as opposed to, like, stuff that I was actually interested in. Um, and, you know, I, I was, like I said, a lot of things I missed because of being on the road for, for wrestling stuff. And I would get text messages from some of the girls going, oh, my gosh, Brandy, you missed it. This happened. Wow. And then this person almost <laughs> fought this person. And then this person's boyfriend got involved. And that person's boyfriend stood up. And I was like, wow, that's going to be great. Like, I'm sad I missed that. That's great television. And it didn't make yeah. a show. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> so I was like, right. so you're like, what happened to that part? part? Right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there there were multiple uh, scenes like that that I heard about that did not make the show. So, I, I mean, I wasn't there for those scenes. My husband was there for one, so I believe his account for sure. <laughs> but, like, you know, sometimes people embellish stuff. Um, so maybe they weren't as compelling as they seemed. But it, it was quite disappointing to – I mean, the show, for a reality show, it played out kind of drama-free um, amongst the women which I guess is right. cool, but at the same time, it is a reality show, and right. people do tune in for that stuff. So mm-hmm. I did notice, you know, some of the fan base was kind of like, well, it's a nice, mellow show, but when's it going to crank up, you know? And then Right, when is it going to get crazy? It's over. Right, and right. it just never really <laughs> did. <laughs> Got you, got you. And Brandy, another storyline from the show that I think really took center stage, especially on social media, is the fact that with you and Cody, you guys are, of course, an interracial couple. And I think that's a topic still in 2018, you know, unfortunately, it's still controversial. And I like the fact that you guys, you know, highlighted that. And I mean, you guys show how beautiful it can be. But I was just reading a stat the other day, and it showed how African-American females, black women, are actually the least likely to date outside their race. So when people are watching you and Cody and, you know, seeing the beautiful interracial love, I mean, what are you hoping they take from it? And kind of what would your message be to people who unfortunately maybe don't agree with it? Oh, man. Well, I would, I, first of all, the people who don't agree, I would just say, mm-hmm. well, then do, do you. You can do with your life whatever you want to do with that. But you really right. don't need to have your finger all up in someone else's face about their life. I mean, if we all just mm-hmm. focused on ourselves, the world would be such a, a much better place anyway. Yeah. So, you know, <laughs> people who, who get up in arms about stuff like that, I guarantee there's something in their life that they could be focusing on and giving more attention to, to better right. their situation than mm-hmm. harping on people in interracial relationships. Right. Um, right. But um, as far as, you know, women uh, I didn't know that statistic that's very interesting to hear yeah. um, because I I know I have a lot of friends that are in, in a uh, interracial relationships um black white everybody so right. uh, that surprises me um mm-hmm. I will say that you know love is love in my opinion um I don't see any color when it comes to dating or you know marriage or I- any of those situations but I can see how some people would. And um, it, it's just a, a matter of times changing. And also where you live can be such a factor as well. I mean, I grew up in right. the, the North or, you know, the Midwest, I guess, but we're, we're pretty North up in Michigan. <laughs> um, right. But, uh, you know, when you come down to the South to places like Atlanta, um, not so much. So mm-hmm. <laughs> it, it, it tends to be a little bit of a learning curve for everybody, depending on 
their whereabouts. But, you know, the, the less we label and focus on things like that, um, right. the better. Uh, a lot of right. times I'm, I'm shocked when people bring stuff up or say something, you know, negative about being in an interracial relationship. Cause I'm like, really, are we still, still here? Or, you know, we're still right. looking at things that we way. We have an but... advance. It seems like sometimes. Right, right, right. So I, I would just say, you know, you got to be true to your heart. Um, you got to be happy with you. You can't harp on, you know, what other people are going to think or family members and friends or even strangers. You, you really just can't worry because right. you can't please everybody at the end of the day. Exactly. So. <laughs> exactly. It's true. It's true. And, Brittany, I mean, just hearing you talk, I feel like a lot of these same things, I kind of like how you you just block out all, I say, the negative energy. Because even on social media, I know you have put up a post um, last month, you know, where you're saying, I mean, you're who you are. You don't care, you know, if people criticize this about your body or that about your body. You're just going to be you. People can like it or hate it. And I feel like that's kind of the attitude that you've had. So it seems like this is kind of the message as well that you try to put across on social media. Like, it doesn't matter what people think. You're going to always do you, right? Um, I definitely try. <laughs> I try mm-hmm. to put that message right. across. Um I also am very known for kind of having a hot button social media Mm -hmm. where, you know, we can speak diplomatically for a while and then sometimes not at all. I'm not going to listen at all. (laughs) So, Uh so, uh, you know, we, we, I try to, I try to always try to, you know, just keep it on message as much as possible on social, but sometimes I I do think it's valuable for people to see you stand up for yourself. Um, Right. I know that if I were, in a situation where I was being bullied or something like that, I think it would help me to see someone I look up to stand up for themselves. Maybe not kind of in the ways that I do at some t- some points, <laughs> but mm-hmm. uh, definitely, you know, just standing and saying, hey, I'm not going to take this. I'm not going to listen to this. Um, you don't get to say exactly what you want to say to me. Um, I think that is helpful in some senses. I, I know a lot of times right. people will say when it comes to social media, you know, oh, well, you're you're above these people no i'm not right. we're all people we're right. all people exactly Just because well, i have same, a public right. job it doesn't mean that i'm above anybody or anybody's below anybody we're all people so if i take a notion to respond i'm responding to you as a person so right. <laughs> just right that that's kind of how how it is um but uh yeah it, it's definitely i think social media is starting to come to a place where we're seeing a lot more positivity. There was some right. dark, dark times in there. Um, I think just so many lost souls just kind of flocked to the internet to let off mm-hmm. steam. Um, but right. it's true. Some, yeah. Hopefully, you know, we're getting to a point where people are starting to see, Hey, well, maybe uplifting each other a little bit. That feels better than tearing each other right. down. Right. It's And I always say that. I mean, why be negative? Like, I feel like it, it takes so much more energy to be negative and just be positive and be uplifting on social media. And hopefully we see more of that because there's too much going on in the world where I think for people to just be negative on social media. So many serious issues. And, but oh, staying on social media, Brady, exactly, right? Staying on social media, Brady, one thing that I know you announced that you were so happy about, Cody is finally on Instagram. Oh, my gosh. It's been <laughs> such a long long time coming with this. I, I, you know, Instagram for me, I actually like it better than Twitter. Um, okay. I feel like it's, it's just more free and fun. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> like, you know, I just post a picture and that's all I'm committed to. <laughs> in right. That, uh, right. Instance. And he loves posting pictures. He's obsessed with our dog, Pharaoh, that that's <laughs> all he ever wants to talk about or put pictures of, up about. So mm-hmm. Instagram is a great place for him to push his message of Pharaoh and husky love, I guess. Um, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> yeah, it, it ended up being kind of big news also because there were so many fake accounts of him that actually people right, that, that we were up. friends with thought were actually him. So it was kind, oh, of, wow. kind of a problem. Yeah, I mean, right. we we had uh, we're we're both participating in um, Chris Jericho's cruise coming up in October, and he was putting out posts and tagging a fake account of Cody for <laughs> for the cruise. So you know, wow, if, if that account was tricking Chris Jericho, imagine how many other people right. were tricking. So, exactly um, right. <laughs> so yeah, so uh, it, it's been good, you know, for people to finally have the real Cody. And he can right. take control of that and post as many pictures of the dog as he likes. 
<laughs> we look forward to seeing those. And Brandy, and Brandy, for those who maybe didn't know that Cody's now on Instagram, can you get his handle so they can follow and get his follower game up? Yes, it is American Nightmare Cody. He decided that himself. <laughs> I did not have any. I figured. <laughs> Too funny. Well, I look forward to his post. And I mean, Brandy, before I let you go, we have to talk about some of your other interests and things that you're doing. One thing that you do is you're actually a blogger, and your blog is called Not Another Basic B, which I love the title. But tell me, I mean, what is kind of your goal and mission for people to see about you through this blog? Um, well, you know, initially my blog, it used to be called Being Brandy Runnels, um, mm -hmm. which I changed because I don't really go by Brandy Runnels anywhere other than the bank. So yeah, <laughs> um, I uh, wanted to, it to be kind of something more fun and um, more of a free space for people to talk and, you know, comment back on posts. And um, for a long time, I was doing just fashion posts. Um, and mm -hmm. then I just got so bored of that. Uh, I love fashion, and I like posting about fashion, but I don't want to do it every other day. It's just too much right. for me. <laughs> right. So, um, so I've opened it up to more of a lifestyle blog where, you know, people talk a lot about various things. We have touched on the topic of interracial dating. Um, mm -hmm. One of the more recent topics that I spoke about was um, my first time speaking about sexual assault um, and being mm -hmm. a part of my, my unfortunately, my background. Um, wow. But um you know, it, it's it's kind of a place where if there's something real and truthful to talk about, we put it there. Um, and I feel like people feel a lot safer speaking about right. things there because it's not quite as open as social media. I mean, we can have the discussion on Twitter, but then there's always going to be somebody who's going to have something negative to say uh, right. with my fans. And as much as I can be prepared for that, I don't know that my fans that are vulnerable are always prepared for that. So I always right. encourage those kinds of topics to make their way over to the blog and it's usually quite peaceful over there <laughs> people right, which is good and, yeah, yeah yeah and then not much drama whatsoever so a lot of heavier stuff we, we put on the blog these days but every once in a while you'll you'll get a you know a, a travel review or you know a fashion review or something like that <laughs> Right, that we'll see, definitely. And, I mean, Brandy, staying with that, you have done just so many different things. So tell me, I mean, what are some of your other ventures right now that you currently have your hands on? Oh, gosh. Well, you know, um, aside <laughs> We have from time. You can go through all, all of them. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I actually probably can keep it kind of short. Um, aside from all of the wrestling, um, I'm obviously working with, Ring of Honor and Women of Honor. Um, mm -hmm. I'm involved in a lot of stuff with New Japan Pro Wrestling along with uh, my Bullet Club buddies, Cody and the Bucks and Hangman Page and Marty Skrull and yeah. even Kenny Omega, who, you know, I can't stand right now. But um, <laughs> but we, we beat him, though, at, at uh, yes. Super Card of Honor. So, you know, yes. I stand him a little bit more. He, he's a little <laughs> humble now. Um, but uh, and, and then uh, I'm going over to Stardom on April 27th, um, which mm -hmm. is Japan's all women's wrestling, uh, their most famous women's wrestling tournament, yes. the Cinderella tournament yes. I'm involved in. So that'll be amazing. I'm really excited. I have a terrible language barrier issue being there by myself. Oh my gosh. <laughs> but yeah, I'm sure. We'll see, we'll see how it goes. The people in Japan are just so amazing and accepting. Um, so I'm sure it's going to be a great time, even though I'm going to look like a stupid tourist most of the time that doesn't know what's going on. Um, but um, aside from all of that, um, mm -hmm. I am just working on a few projects. Uh, I work a lot with some friendly production companies that um, I have good relationships with, and I have uh, a few different concepts that we are playing with right now and hoping to bring to fruition sooner than later. Um, yeah. So that's always something to keep an eye out for and, and look out for in the future. Um, another thing I'm working on is a, a cooking show. Um, but Ooh, this exciting. is something that I'm interested in streaming. So we're okay. in the very baby stages of that, but I, I have a platform and we're, we're working towards getting that going as soon as possible. I want to say as hopefully as soon as next week, but I'm not going to promise that because <laughs> because okay. of everything that's going on with the travel schedule. So um, right. it should be with 
within the next coming weeks for sure, though. Oh, cool. Very exciting, because I know cooking is actually one of your hobbies. So tell me, I mean, what are you cooking usually when you're in the kitchen? Um, usually when I'm in the kitchen, I'm trying to keep it healthy, um, but okay. also tasty. So Ooh. there's a lot of trial and error in the kitchen mm-hmm. on meals <laughs> perhaps lately, yeah. um, which I never, I've learned before never to let my husband know there's trial and uh-huh. error. He's the type that's like, <laughs> get a cookbook out, read it piece by piece and put it together just wow. like that. Don't try things, don't do anything. Right. And the second he just I follows him, it. You know, he'll ha- yeah, he'll have a bite of something and uh, and I'll say, okay, is it good? And he'll say, yeah, it's great, it's great. And I'm like, okay, so you know how there was supposed to be milk there? Well, instead uh-huh. of that, orange juice. What? And, I'm, and he'll <laughs> be like, oh, my God, no. Like, Why'd you do that? You yeah. yeah, he'll be like, you can't do that. I'm like, you just said it was great, and I just did it, and it's fine. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's fun. Um, I, I definitely like uh, the experiment. I'm really into baking, but, okay. um, you know, unfortunately – in my profession, I can't eat a lot of baked goods all the time. So right, I'm it's sure. more of a, a fun thing, that more holiday-centered baking that I'll do. Um, but definitely in love with cookies and cakes and cupcakes and all of those <laughs> fun yeah. delicious Yeah, oh, who things. isn't, right? Yeah. <laughs> those are so good. <laughs> Even Definitely. though I know I should stay away from them. That's exciting. I mean, you have so many new things coming up. I know Japan is going to be such a blast for you. I mean, just tell me, I mean, your overall, what do you hope to bring to stardom? Um, well, you know, I I am just so glad that people are so excited for me to come over. Um, yeah. As I've stated before, you know, wrestling for me, I'm a storyteller. Uh, I am mm-hmm. less less likely in most people's minds to do very high risk things. However, right. the past week I've gone through a table and I've done a mm-hmm. super flex off the top rope. So, um, yes. you know, not to say that we don't do these things. <laughs> it's just, right. uh, I think it, I, I like them in smaller doses here and there. So <laughs> I think it'll be interesting yeah. for me to go over to stardom and kind of blend my style with Japanese wrestling style and, Right. It, it should be a lot of fun. I, I think I'm going to learn a lot from working with those girls, and hopefully they can learn a little something from me too. I'm sure they can. It's like a cross trade off. I mean, you can't beat that. I mean, Brandy, you have been such a blast to have on. And before I let you go, I do want to recognize a person we recently lost, which a lot of people have been pouring out their love for and their condolences, but we did lose Bruno San Martino. And I'm not sure if this is someone that you followed or personally knew, but if you did know, I mean, I would just love to get your thoughts on, you know, his impact and legacy um, that he had. Uh, one of the most compelling things for me about Bruno San Martino was mm-hmm. his, the legacy that he leaves behind as a wrestler. Um, I mean, he had a great full life. He was 82, I believe. Was yes. is that mm-hmm. correct? Yeah. Yes, I believe so that's correct. Full wonderful life. He was in good health. No one has anything negative to say about Bruno, which is hard to have had such a long career. And, um, you know, he was always just so well received. Um, The fans loved him. Everyone who worked with him loved him. He put forth a a wonderful professional um, face forward all of the time. And, you know, never, again, never a negative thing said about Bruno and um, wrestling was just so lucky to have him. So everyone's right. always going to cherish Bru- Bruno. And I'm so happy that we have things like the network where people can continue to enjoy his work um, for years to come. Yes. Yes. Oh my gosh. And so well said, thank you again for that. Um, and I want to actually dedicate this show to his memory. Now for everyone listening, that's a wrap for this edition of Listen In with KNN. I hope you had fun, learned something, and of course jumped in on the KNN bandwagon. Be sure to listen in each and every week for new shows that drop online at Fox Sports 1340AM.com and KelseyNicoleNelson.com. If that's not enough, the show is available for download on iTunes and Google Play. Be sure to subscribe, rate, and review. Your feedback and support matter. So until later this week, enjoy the sports world, smile, and don't take your fantasy sports too seriously because there's always another play.
Follow Kelsey on Twitter at the real K Nelson. You've been listening to Listen In with K and N. AM 1340 and 96.9 FM, Fox Sports Radio.